I was gonna try. I was gonna try to hit that <laughs> high uh, 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 Freddie Mercury note, but I can't. But dude, you know what I'm saying? Like that dude. show me. I, I said, like, "Hello, Burn View Nation." Yeah, you know, I like that. That's how he would do. Like you know, what I'm saying? bro. Uh, I wish we could get a, like an intro like that, just super dope Freddie Mercury, you know, intro. Like you know, do us a solid. Do us a solid. <laughs> <laughs> Nick here. What's going on? Gabe, and we are here today super excited for another Queen song. Dude, this guy keeps me on the, on a tight leash. Like, I cannot listen to any new Queen stuff. And between Metallica and, and Queen, they're the two um, groups that I've really taken to going down this uh, rock and roll, heavy metal journey. And, like, I just can't wait every time we record. Like, oh, I know I'm going to get either a Queen or a Metallica joint. And, um, again, I think that... They're, while they're two separate genres of music, I still enjoy Metallica's, like, music as far as, like, the guitar playing, the actual instrumentals better. Like, man, the, 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 the guitarists are absolutely insane. I mean, they slay, as Nick would say. No, no, as my kids would say. Okay, but Freddie Mercury is just the showstopper. He is the, the, now I know where Shawn Michaels got his flamboyance from. He patterned himself after Freddie Mercury. He had to be like, wait, let me take some notes. Yep, I'm just the sexy boy. Sexy, think about my, uh, yeah, Shawn Michaels and W.O. Yeah. He was trying to play up that, that Freddie Mercury image. I guarantee you he stole it. If he was being honest, he stole it. He had to steal it from him. Because there was not another front man, at least in my opinion, whether it was rap, rock. Well, like, here he goes again. That is that just, just, dude, just out there. Like, he is he not just a bird? Maybe Elvis was, but Elvis didn't have a band. It was just Elvis. But if you're a band and a guy that's that out, will you introduce me to another be to uh, uh, other groups like the Beatles? None of the Beatles, even though McCartney was like technically their lead singer, he wasn't like a showstopper like Freddie Mercury. Just give me the attention, me, me, me. Maybe that's why I like him because I'm feeling yeah, myself too. Yeah, me, 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 me. He should have had a song just me, me, me. It's all about me. Not, and I, I, I would be a fan. You're out of control. Not just that, but you've gotten the audience upset because you keep talking about Freddie Mercury so much. You got these people saying, what about the rest of the band? I, they all wrote songs. They all wrote music. They were all contr Like, I'm telling you. I'm being candid, guys. Like, I just think he is so captivating and nobody has... Uh, you could take anyone out. Like the one guy that went from Metallic, I don't even remember his name, and went to Megadeth, right? He Dave was Mustang. Dave Mustang. Like he's got that weird voice. He's kind of like a showman too, but he's not Freddie Mercury. Like, okay, does, does Queen work without Freddie Mercury? It doesn't. It, it doesn't. Did you just compare Dave Mustang to no, Freddie Mercury? But my point is, you could probably uh, think about how many bands, and he, whether it was rap or rock, you could take one member out, bring in another, and the band will still be the same. Queen is not Queen without Freddie Mercury, bro. I don't know too many bands you can do that because Dave Mustaine wasn't the lead singer of Metallica. He wasn't the front man. You don't know too many bands that can do that? That uh, you can take out the lead singer, switch it out for someone else, and it'll, and it'll be just as awesome. It's happened ACDC because of the untimely death. It happened in, you know, the whole nonsense with Van Hag Hagar and Van Halen or whatever, where they had that cold. That was more of a rift or anything else, but you don't have that too often. I mean, case in point, a smaller band, you may not know, but you know one of their songs from Drowning Pool, Let the Bodies Hit, hit the, the Floor. Yeah, yeah. He unfortunately died right when they made it big. Wow. And they're, they're still doing music, but no one really knows what's going on with them. I don't even know who their singer is right now. Sublime, right? They had a couple of huge hits, and then he passed away. They're still going around, but it's not anything like it was before. So, I mean, it's, it's very, very... I see what you're saying. I, I'm not saying he's replaceable. Another thing that we made a mistake on is apparently they're still touring Adam Lambert with Queen. I thought they stopped a few years ago. They're still going strong, so that's awesome. Dude, and that was a hit because it was heat. When it was here at, in Vegas and MGM, I was taking, like, big-name celebrities to go see it. And I, there, I was like, Adam Lambert? Wasn't that the dude on, like, America's Got Talent? Or? He was on America. Uh, but you got to remember, America, Queen, Queen's a huge band, too, so they wanted to see the other guy. Anyways, we're going to jump into this song. This is called Crazy Little Thing Called Love, but we didn't say it yet. And... No joke. It. I don't want to give too much away, but no joke. When I heard this song growing up, I seriously thought it was Elvis. That's all I'm going to say. It's such a different type of song for me. If you like our reaction, please don't forget to... Like and subscribe. Now you scare me because and here comes another... And I'm not saying he's doing an Elvis impression, but I literally thought it was an Elvis song. That's why it's like, it's so different than their other music. Oh, but man. not like, I don't know. I'm going to shut up. I got... This. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Um, I'd be right there with you, my friend. Here we go. Nice. 
Shorts. I've heard this. I thought it was Elvis. I swear. I've heard it and I, I thought it was you. Elvis. I, dude. First Isn't of all, that crazy. And, and, and this has happened before, guys. Where he'll play yeah. a song, Full disclosure, and he now knows it. Whether it's like I didn't know it was a, that one Journey song. Like, oh yeah, I've heard that, and you know, because you're hearing it in movies and stuff like this. I've heard this in tons of movies. Yeah. I've heard this. In, I thought this was Elvis. Yeah. I promise you, I thought this was Elvis. I don't think I realized it. it wasn't until maybe five years ago. No <laughs> joke. And I've listened to it my whole life, dude. Like. Wow, he even slays more. Oh, give it to me. Like he's like he's embracing that, but isn't that crazy? That is two seconds in. Like, oh my god, start over again. And we'll get past this like slow intro. What, a, dude? What, what a trip, bro. Walk. make me happy that you thought the same thing you're not crazy first and foremost second of all before i forget it's definitely gonna be an edit i gotta ask who wrote their music and like like here's the thing i know you how you talk about most of the beatles was both john lennon and paul mccartney but think about how different so much of their music is like who was the main brain behind it was it somebody else in the band that we're not sure about that's not getting enough credit the songwriter whoever puts it together because sometimes their stuff is layered so well and again he's able to go to from bohemian rap city which i i again that's the i didn't even realize that was a real song but when i heard it on ways where i was like man this thing is awesome to go from that which is so groundbreaking to this is like more country, more Elvis, and and uh, to and again, we have tons of Elvis in impersonators here in Vegas or whatnot, um, because it, it, I guess Vegas was known as his second home or whatnot. Even though Elvis was what from Nashville, Tennessee, or something like that, he was the south, that from down sure. south. But I mean, there's so many. If you come to Vegas, you got an Elvis that'll marry you. You got another Elvis that'll be a, dealing you blackjack cards. He's all over the place. You know what I mean? The one that'll take pictures with you on the strip, you're good. There's Elvis everywhere. But, you know, to go to that, like, dude, and then go to some of their other stuff on uh, um, We Are the Champions, like, that's just more like a classic hard rock. Like, oh, dude, I, I love Queen. It's, uh, man, it, it, it's taking that 
Metallica top spot, dude. That's it's crazy. Nice level. It's crazy. It's it's a great song, and I, I'm trying to look up here while he's talking to see if it. I mean, it had to be widely inspired by Elvis. Like, I wouldn't be oh, surprised to hear. He was even he was doing the fan. little leg thing, like Elvis, the little a uh, uh, shuffle. I mean, they had their leather coats. I've never seen them wear those before. The leather jackets. I mean, not coats. But it says on here, this one was written by Freddie Mercury in 1979, and it was actually their first number one hit in America. So that's kind of cool. Oh wow! Yeah. Interesting. Um, Interesting. But yeah, if here we go. Let's see. Crazy little thing called love took me five or ten minutes. I did that on the guitar, which I can't play for nuts. And in one way, it was quite a good thing because I was restricted knowing only a few chords. It's good discipline because I simply had to write within a small framework. I couldn't work through too many chords. And because of that restriction, I wrote a good song, I think. The song was written by Mercury as a tribute there to his go. musical hero. The next line when I stopped reading. Elvis it. Presley. There we go. So, of course, because it was... But, man, to be able to... For him to be able to get his voice that close to an Elvis voice, mm -hmm. it just shows you his true range mm -hmm. as a singer. Mm -hmm. And, I, again... On everything, Nick, you're not crazy. I would have bet a thousand dollars. Like if you just were one of those uh, TV shows, game shows, or whatever, who sung this? Song? Oh, that's Elvis. Like you know what I mean? That nobody that, else has that. That song. would be interesting. Like if yeah. you did that, how many people would fall for that? Oh, not do do a social experiment where we record people blind before we put this one out. Hey, listen to the song. Who do you think this is? I guarantee you, your wife, my wife, colleagues at school, they'll all be, they'll all say Elvis. Now maybe not my wife because she's actually a huge Queen fan. But yes, I hear what you're saying. Her dad used to play it all the time. On that same kind of vein, but kind of different, is I uh, I came across a, a cassette tape of um, Tina Turner of all people, and it was called The Best. And I'm like thinking, like, what song is that? What song is that? And automatically, in my head, like, you're simply, simply the, the best. best. And I'm like, no, that's called Simply the Best, right? No, it's just called The Best. So I, it was in my head. Right. So I played it for my for my class as yeah. they're doing work or whatever. Yeah. And I had a few kids like, that's an actual song. I just thought that was written for commercials. <laughs> And it was hilarious, and they were blown away that it was a full-fledged song, not just a jingle. Dude, so many of these songs, though, I never realized that, because I've heard them, and normally, the ones that I have heard, they're in a movie somewhere, or in, in, in a television show I watch. Like, that's normally where I'm able, oh, yeah, that was in um, Ready Player One, or that was in yeah. Growing Pains. Pop culture, sure, pop culture stuff yeah. like that. But, uh, man, again. He said Growing Pains. I love it. I love Growing Pains. You know what I mean? Like, like... He was a. Uh, I think there was one song you played for me. And I was like, oh, I heard that on Growing Pains. I can't remember which one it was, but I loved it. It's definitely an added it. Again, Queen can do no wrong. Queen fans, oh I apologize. I'm not besmirching the rest of the band. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying Freddie Mercury is is just one in a lifetime, one in a million. Like that dude is is the epitome of what a superstar is. But yeah, the band is. I get it. The, it he wasn't a solo show. I get that. And they were they uh they were good music and even he admits it there and I like how humble he is he's like you know I was restricted I wrote the song so I was restricted by the, the only chords I knew because I only knew three or four so one of the things that I do like about Bohemian Rhapsody is the craziness of it for you know the piano then the the guitar riffs I think that's one of the craziest guitar riffs ever as well so that song yes that was a total band you know what I mean like like like. That song doesn't happen with just Freddie Mercury, I guess, is what I'm saying. So even there, he's a, he's admitting like he was restricted and gives kind of props to the rest of his band by saying, yeah, I don't know any chords, I don't play the guitar. And if there is a knock on him, how often do you see him actually playing a, mu a, a musical instrument? I mean, I've seen him on a piano a few times, but you not... play the piano for sure. But not like slaying the guitar, you know what I mean? Or, or, or the... Most frontmen don't play the guitar, you know? Interesting, interesting. Oddly enough, I want to say most front women do, I think. So that's kind of interesting. But most frontmen, they're the frontman for a reason. John Bon Jovi, I think he can play the guitar, but I don't think he does it on every... I, don't, I could be going crazy. Anyways, there's a lot. I'm just trying to see right here who wrote... Now that you've mentioned it, I want to say written by Lisa or Freddie Mercury. Yeah, so I thought it was mostly written by him, but I see what you're saying because there's so much involved. But it's just like any song for most bands. You do have to have other bandmates, but you have your frontman for a reason. And if your frontman sucks... I'm sorry. I mean, Oasis is a really, really good example of that where their front man, they had, I don't know if you know the story, but two brothers, the front man, I think Liam was the name, but he was a complete D-bag and he just did not show up to shows or whatever. And so his wow. younger brother, he had to step in for him at some kind of like big show because he was just, he was drunk or he was high or he just didn't really care. So see how you guys do without me. And his brother killed it. Who's his brother, Oasis, they, they sing that song Wonderwall. 
Uh, and I, I'm not going to sing it right now, yeah. but I'll give you a few. Anyways. Oh, I want to hear Nick it's, sing. It's a very, stop. <laughs> it's a very, very interesting story about how his younger brother, who's also in the band, had to step up as a lead singer, and people loved his version of it. And then his brother was like, oh. Anyways, hope you liked our reaction to this one. We can keep talking forever and ever. Let us know what you think about this song, about how closely it sounds like an Elvis song, and which one's your favorite of the Queen songs that are out there that we haven't checked out yet. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time. We know a thing.